welcome back to the channel. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And finally, we've got, uh, I'm starting to film part 18 of this um, mammoth task of correcting this hull and doing all the plating and everything. If you're just watching me for the first time now, go back and have a look. There is a playlist of all this and you can see all the corrections I've made to the shape of the hull, how I've done it. And you can see that I'm actually now working on the, the plating. So, um... One of the major errors in the uh, trumpeter kit, I say one of, because there are many, uh, the actual propeller shafts um, from the kit are actually all you get. I mean, if you look back, you'll see it's just a, a literally like a pencil tube and then this this fairing on the bottom. None of this actual fairing here is actually included. Um, so I've, I've added a lot of material here and it's all in styrene for those that just want to write. Why didn't you use filler? Uh, it's all in styrene because I'm using styrene for the, the plating. So basically I'm using styrene for the plating, so I need styrene to stick it to. I don't want to be using super glues and stuff on this. I want it all welded together. In fact, when, when it's all done, I will probably get like a half inch brush or something and, and some MEK or whatever, just brush it on, let it all soak into all the joints and make sure that it's all welded up solid and it's not going to split in the future. So, um... We can see here, this is the problem I've been up against and this is why I've been away so long. Um, this area here is quite thick because it was like an air pocket, but this was done probably Tuesday, it's Saturday now. And as you can see, I can still, I can still make a mark in that. <laughs> it's, it's still soft. And that is the problem with using sprue goo. In hindsight, I probably would have built it up more with plastic card um, and then sanded it down or maybe indeed used filler and then try and put like a plastic skin over the top of it. But um, I'm not sure how that would work. But anyway, um, it's done now, we're there and, and we're, we're sort of ready to go. So these basically go on here like so. In fact, I think I've got that the wrong side. These basically go on like, like this. No, that is the right side, sorry. And I've actually managed to push that brass rod in pull that out a bit that's going to go in there and that one's going to slot into there you can see I've got these brass pins in there and then for alignment I've made this up as I've shown you before and this actually goes in like this and then that aligns all three now the thing is we've got such a large area oh, and if you're wondering what the brown tape is the brown tape is there because you can put sprue glue on it you can put anything on it and it won't affect it um, it's a fantastic protector against resins and sprue goo and polystyrene cements and super glue and everything. Nothing will stick to this brown parcel tape. And as we all know, those of us that sell stuff on eBay, it doesn't stick to cardboard boxes very well either. So um, anyway, um, so now what we need to do is fix these out to the hull and then we're going to finish them actually on the hull. So that's what my uh, next challenge is. So how am I going to get these to fix on? Because... They've got quite a lot of leverage here and we're going to be knocking them about and everything. So I'm going to actually bolt them on. And I've got some little bolts here from Tamiya RC kits and I've got my drill set up. So um, what I need to do is initially drill a hole. I'm just going to put one hole in just to have one hole drilled in there. So I'm going to take this first of all and I'm going to drill a hole. This was filled with resin. If you remember, I packed these out and I filled them up because these plastic parts are hollow. So I filled them up with resin and there's plastic card glued over the top. So we've got something solid. It's not going to be going into anything hollow. So I'm going to start off by drilling a hole in here. Okay, I'm going to try and get it on centre. That's a bit out. If you do get off centre on a, on a bar, all you've got to do is put the drill on an angle, drill in a bit and then stand it vertical. And you will see that you end up with a hole then on centre. So we can drill through there now, try and keep everything perpendicular. As you can hear, it's solid all the way through and the drill is struggling. It's because it's clogging up. There we go, and we're through. Okay, so that's that one done. So now that that's drilled through there, we can offer this up to the hull. Just like so and then we can hold that in place and then drill I think I need a new battery in my drill 
there we go we can just drill through like that so we should have a hole now there we go we've got a hole in the hull got two holes there for the brass pins and that hole there obviously I'll take this tape off before I glue it on so now what I'm going to do is open this hole up so I'm going to use three millimeter drill in fact I'll draw this off camera because you don't want to watch me doing that um, and then I'll be back all right so that's all drilled now you can see we've got the hole through there the hole through the hole there so we can pop that on using the brass pins to line it up and then the bolt will go through just like so and then we can put the nut on the back and put it all down but as you can see the screw head is proud of the surface so we need to drill into the surface of the tube to get the um the bolt to sit down within the surface now i don't have my battery drill to hand with me so i've got to do this by hand and it's not particularly easy because i don't think the drill is particularly sharp but all i want to do is just make a sort of counter bore in here so that the screw head goes down in in fact i don't even think that drill's big enough uh, let me find a larger drill so I'm going to use something this big to start with and just knock out a, a large area like so okay so that's a little bit more with that one just like so and then I'll come in with something this sort of size because we're going to have to go in with filler afterwards anyway and this is the problem with drills is you get this they want to just dig in all the time so that's when it's good to use a um a ball ended burr okay so there we go I decided to use the drill after all just going with this um this is what's called a burr and they're fantastic little tools and just go with like that <clears throat> We can cut away and because it's not like a drill it doesn't have just have the two flutes it won't just dig in and catch on everything it's especially good when you go through thin sheet stuff you know when you cut through sheet and the drill just picks up and ends up you under these two hooks well these won't give you that you can get them in all sorts of different shapes <clears throat> so anyway that's that done that's countersunk so we'll take the screw out get the drill out of the way get this deck out of the way as well and then we can put the Put the propeller shaft in place, push the screw through just like that. Take a nut on the back. These are M3 screws, by the way. Just get the nut started. There we go. And then, as always, Mr. Unprepared, take a screwdriver. just nip that down like that and then once that's on and it's got glue in it and everything around it that's not I mean you can see that's solid that's not going anywhere um, just check that our jig still fits on like that on like that and you see it fits on there nice you shouldn't have to force it on it should just fit nice and loosely and that you can see that's now quite solid so I'll do the same on the other side and then I'll come back right there we go so that's both sides screwed in now and as you can see the jig just fits on there so make sure everything stays nice and straight at the end of the day if i need to do any tweaking i can um but basically what i'm looking for is when you look along this end when you when you sort of view it from here i want to make sure that i'm just seeing everything's nice and level there should be a dead straight line between all the three props um on that note i have had a comment from a gentleman i can't remember his name now who is absolutely adamant that the um the center prop on titanic had four blades i'm adamant it had three blades if anybody can <laughs> comment below either way please do because uh i'm always open to suggestions because as far as i know with this bloody thing you know th there's no i'm not being disrespectful towards titanic saying this bloody thing but when i say this bloody thing i mean it causes so many arguments and and uh and discussions about what's you know this happened this happened this happened it's like i said about the apparently three dogs survived and then this other guy's come and said no nope, no dog survived you know it's, so somebody obviously has their opinions and have written down um i mean i've even found an error in the uh, titanic the magnificent book there is a there is an error in there so um and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna talk about it i'm not gonna say what it is or whatever but uh, i don't want to put that book down so um 
you know, there's obviously people with all these conversations and opinions about this, that and the other. So we shall see. Anyway, um, right, so they're screwed on now and they're nice and solid. And where were we? We need to take them off, take the tape off and look about how we're going to glue them on. OK, so I've got the tape off. What you often find with this brown tape is you get a residue, as you can see on here, and it's 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 sticky. Um, and I use this on the plastic. I use IPA to remove it. So I just take some IPA on a on a paper towel, get it nice and wet. You want it. You don't you know, you want to get it wet. You don't want to be messing around and just get it wet like so. And then just leave it a few seconds. And then you should find that when you rub it, it will just lift it off. And it's uh, it's quite annoying because for a tape that doesn't really stick very well, it tends to leave a deposit behind that's extremely sticky. So, um, I mean, you could use uh, Mr. Kind of Leveling Thinner, but not everybody's got that. So I'm using IPA. You can see here where we've got the the plastic, not just the glue. We've got the plastic of the tape left behind. Obviously, the IPA won't get through the plastic, but it will get rid of the the glue deposits there as you can see quite easily. Again here we've got the plastic. The other thing you can do is rub it on your finger, roll your finger over and it will roll up like bubble gum. As you can see there. It's um it's horrible stuff. If you are using this on a painted surface, like if you're using it on your car, um, I found the best way to remove this glue residue safely. Uh, you can use all sorts of chemicals on paint, but if you're really worried about it, um, you can use Auto Glim uh, Extra Gloss Protection. It's there's a, a, a super polish they make, and it's the one with the, like the bronzy coloured label. Like the resin's a red label, isn't it? And the the window cleaner is a purple label. The one with the bronzy coloured label, Auto Glim Extra Gloss Protection, removes this stuff like that. Um, I just tried all these different chemicals. And in the end, I took a scrap panel and I even used acetone on it and it didn't affect it at all. I'm not saying you should try that on your car, but um, I was amazed how unaffected it was. You can also get the dedicated glue removers, which I've got for removing uh, if you've had a car wrapped and you want to remove the vinyl. But believe me, that stuff absolutely stinks. Um, and when I say I don't mean like solvency stink, it stinks like like paraffin and it just reeks you get you, you you get some on a rag you use it you chuck it in the bin in the garage you go to the garage door open the garage door the next day and the whole garage stinks of it it's awful stuff um it's a very very strong smelling paraffin it's, it's obviously got paraffin in it to to dissolve the glue but there we go you can see it's not easy it's not a, a a 10 second job but you know it's not hard but it's just uh time consuming so that's that done I'll get the other side done and then I'll come back and we'll get the glue out okay so that's all cleaned up now all the glue is off what I'm doing now is go with a very coarse sanding stick and I'm just gonna basically rough up the area and you would normally do this if you were using like a five minute epoxy or something you would rough up the area to give the glue a key but what I'm doing here obviously this is a cement it's a wild action glue I'm using so I don't necessarily need to give it a key, but what, what you do when you actually do this, one, you're cleaning the surface, you're leveling the surface, but also you're opening the surface up. At your microscopic level, you're giving it like a load of grooves and scratches. You're kind of doubling the surface area. So if you can give it a load of grooves and scratches, it'll give the glue a lot more area to work into. Um, I've done the same on these. These are all sanded out on the back and, um, you know, roughed up. And ready for action. So I'll concentrate on this side first. I'll grab my thing. This polystyrene block is really handy so I can hold the, the hull at this sort of angle. Um, so that's ready like that. Now what I'm doing, I've got my Mr. Cement SP which I'm not going to use. It's this one here I want isn't it? Mr. Cement Deluxe. Now this is it's still a liquid cement as you can see but it's a little bit thicker. So it takes a little bit longer to dry, which is what we want. And I've got some sprue goo here, which is a, ignore the colour of it, it's just got a dye in it. But it's a very, it's, it's made of styrene, it's not made of sprue. I never make my sprue goo from sprue, I always make it from styrene. And unless it's a particular type of plastic. But basically that is just thin sprue goo, so we can get plenty in there. And then what we'll do is get it all bolted down, it's all going to ooze out. 
and it's going to make a mess. So whether I put some music over this or not, I don't know. But um, the first thing I'm going to do is get this wet with glue. And when I say wet, I mean wet. I want it to really attack it and really get in there. Where did that go? That wet on my modelling mat. Look at that. It took that blue spot off there straight away. So I'm going to get the hull away from the glue in case I splash it on there. Okay, so we're going to get this nice and wet. I don't want to get any splashing the glue on the hull. I don't want to be off camera either. There we go. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I don't have a monitor. I don't. I, I don't have a monitor to look at while I'm filming, which I should have. Um, there are all sorts of things you can get, so you can watch it on the screen, but. I've used, I'm certainly not going to pay for that. I'm not going to pay a monthly subscription or a one-off fee just so I could look at my computer screen and see what I'm filming. I'll be getting a new camera soon, very soon. And that'll give me, um, that'll give me a means of uh, doing this. So what we'll do now, I'm just going to put some on here. I'm not really too worried about where it goes because it's all going to get covered in plastic sheet anyway. So we'll just get this nice and wet. And I just want to, really just get it get the plastic soft and gooey ready for what's coming next so we'll get the top lock on there because that smells like it'll take your lungs out and then we've got some sprue goo here if you can hear clattering in the background it's blowing a bloody gale outside today forecast a gentle breeze yeah it's about 30 mile an hour winds i'd say um and i've got vents in the obviously in the bathrooms and um oh come on and they've got sort of lids over them outside and they clatter in the wind this is annoying because i haven't got enough in there and yes i know i can pull the brush down every time i comment about not getting glue on the brush somebody will say do you know you can pull the end of the yes yes Right, so there we go. I'm sorry guys, I know you're trying to be helpful. Okay, so I think that'll do us. Okay, so we've got like a, almost like we're laying tiles on a floor. I'll just get some more glue. Because I really do want this to weld in. I don't want it to be... hanging about you know I don't want the last thing I want here is a dry joint so I'll get this back in the frame get this on just like so I squeeze down and we can see it oozing all the stringing everywhere okay and then we'll take our bolt and I think what I'll do We'll put some sprue goo around the head of the bolt just so that makes sure that gets seated in there nicely and the screwdriver is magnetic so I can push that in there like that and come from behind with my nut And then we can come in there with some more glue. Get it all around here. Just rub down anything that's oozing out. easier to do it now than when it's dry and having to sand it. 
and that's that firmly fixed in place and we just check our alignment that's okay with that side so that's that in there as you can see I've managed to run over that so that's okay we'll just cut that piece out and then we'll make a new one that runs over this all just sort of blends in here but th and there's still a lot to do here this all blends in it's all just sort of flat almost but uh, that's going to need some proper sprue go in there to help to get that gap filled so we'll get that done now and then I could get in there and sort of meander in with all the crap that's already in there it should all be nice and solid then And because it's all, because it's fairly thin, the capillary action should help to pull it in. There we go. Here we are, that's that done in there. We'll get it up on this side. And we'll get some in there. You're probably looking at this and thinking, oh my god, what has he done to his Titanic? Believe me, you'll be wanting to do this to yours. But don't forget, if you do it and mess it up, don't blame me. I ain't done nothing wrong. Right. That's that done. So I've just got a rinse and repeat for the other side. And that's that. In fact, I can put some sprue goo over that screw. And then that'll be all ready to sand down and you'll never know it was there. Okay, so I'll get the other side done and then I'll come straight back. And there we go, that's both sides done. And I've gone round with the edges with some sprue goo, just to let that all soak in. And now I'm going to have to leave that for, I don't know, 48, 72 hours. And I'm going to have to put some more sprue goo in here, I can see. So we'll get some more in there. But I'm going to leave this for a long while now and let this cure so that I know it's cured and then um, and then we should be able to get on with adding some more sprugo <laughs> before we do some more plating um, like I said earlier I may actually start to revert to um, adding some plastic car to build it up and then carve it back rather than waiting for all the sprugo to dry because it's uh, it's dragging out and I've got people getting impatient um, Certain if certain guy well one guy in particular if I put a video up that's not Titanic You put a message up that just says Titanic question mark question mark question mark question mark question mark well I do mention this in pretty much all of my videos So if you don't want to listen to them and you just want to write question mark question mark question mark then uh, please don't So anyway, there we go um That's it, job done. So I'm going to call it a day there. Now I know this has been a very short video, but if I don't put something out, then someone's going to get in. Well, understandably, you guys are getting impatient. You want to see this thing progressing, and um, unfortunately, this is this area here is going to be the longest, worst area for patients because you've just got to do it and let it dry. If I try and continue to work on this now. You know, I get it all nice and lovely. I could leave that for an hour and probably be able to sand it. Um, and then I come back tomorrow, it'll look like that. It'll just sink back. 
so um, you've got to sort of give it plenty of time to, to dry especially with how thick it is and everything so um, we're going to go for that the other thing I wanted to ask you about somebody has asked me if I could make them a new stem area here I'm going to put this on the bench it's a bit dodgy um, this area here this is where the tow rope goes for the tugboats um, it's all the wrong shape it's horrible and somebody has asked if I could make a resin insert to go in there so if anybody's interested in that let me know what you would like uh, what I would probably do is have it so that you would cut a piece out and insert it so it'll go underneath the deck um, let me know I, I, I'd be interested to know what you think and what you want to see I mean as far as I can see all it needs is blending in with some filler but maybe there's something else wrong with it you let me know in the comments below and we'll go from there so we'll call that a day and we'll back, get the stern back on the camera because that's what this is all about and we can see now that that's all settling down all right so thanks for watching guys i'll see you all real soon with another part of this in between there's going to be other stuff so thanks for watching bye for now